Hello students, welcome to this lecture. We'll try to understand the very important concept of mens rea and actus rea from the perspective of UPSC Civil Services main examination of law option. Now, in this topic, there are two important things. First, of course, what you need to know. And second is that why you need to know this very important concept of mens rea and actus rea. Now, as you know that crime or any offense I am using these two terms purposely. We will try to explain these two terms. Say, for example, crime or offense includes both the mental element or mens rea and also the act or the physical element. That is the act itself. Now, act here refers to consequence of the act. Example of consequence of the act is that A intends to kill B, right? Now, there are various ways in which A can kill B. A finds a revolver, shoots B. So, the consequence of the act of A is that B dies. So, this is the consequence of that that B dies because of certain act. Now, A must have some feelings against B because of which he thought of killing or murdering B, right? So, this element or this mental element is what is referred as mens rea. So, in this lecture, we will try to understand whether the term mens rea has been defined under the Indian Penal Code or not? What are the constituents of mens rea? And whether every crime or every offense as highlighted here has to include both mens rea and actus rea or are there any example or exception where still a certain act will be an offense Despite the fact that there is no guilt or there is no criminal intent to commit such an illegal act. So, I have used another term, illegal. Now, when we talk about mens rea or the mental element, as I have stated that it has not been defined in the Indian Penal Code. So, we need to ascertain its value or its element or its constituent elements from various terms. Now, generally, the aspect of mens rea has been defined along with a particular offense as provided under Indian Penal Code. So, offense according to Indian Penal Code refers to any act which is punishable under the IPC. Correct? Crime, on the other hand, is a larger umbrella of which um, offense is a part. And when we talk about crime or any offense, we must understand that we are talking with respect to the society at large. Because ultimately, the purpose of state is to ensure law and order in the society. And to ensure that there is law and order, people are not running riot, they are not killing each other just to score certain their intentions or to settle their scores. So, the state has ensured that the rights, liberty and property of the citizens or the persons should be secured. And for this purpose, this branch of criminal law ensures that there is order in the society by punishing certain illegal acts or certain acts which can be said to be an offense. So, for the purpose of IPC, any act which is punishable under IPC can be said to be an offense. So, there is an act which can be either legal or illegal, right? Now, if 
an act is illegal it will be punishable under any law say i indian penal code or any other statutory law right and when we talk about crime at large then technically speaking there is as such no proper definition of crime but crime can be said to be any act which is done in the society which is punishable by law any law statutory law penal code or any other law if an act is deemed to be punishable or it is supposed not to be done then that act is a crime in general now here when we will understand crime we will also understand from the perspective of society so this is more or less what we need to know in this lecture now coming to why we need to know very simply there are two reasons here it has been provided in the upsc syllabus and there are number of previous years questions which has been asked by upsc in the law so here if we look into the syllabus itself and the paper 2 of the law optional look into this general principles of criminal liability which includes mens rea and actus reus first part and mens rea in the statutory of so mens rea in the mental element in statutory offenses or those offenses prescribed by any statute or legislation so this is what your syllabus is right and if you look at some of the pyqs asked each year or asked year after year just look at this very straight forward question existence of mens rea along with the commission of actus reus makes the act an offense very straight forward or even without mens rea there are certain acts which are offenses under the indian penal code so it is asking about those exceptions that even without mens rea there are certain acts which are offenses under ipc let's come back here again so here what we need to understand is that what are those acts or which are deemed punishable despite the fact that mental element is not there what are those acts generally for which both mental element and the consequence of the act is necessary and also there is possibility that there are certain acts although not intended in such a certain way but happened nevertheless right so these are different kinds or types of acts which can be declared as punishable under the ipc however the most important aspect which we need to understand is what constitutes the guilty mind or criminal intent that is mens rea now the genesis of this entire discussion is from this very famous legal maxim namely actus non facit rerum nisi mens sit rerum which means act itself is not a crime unless coupled with a guilty mind so if you look at this particular situation here then it says that act itself is not a crime unless coupled with a guilty mind so there has to be a connection between the act and the mental element now generally in examples of crime first a person decides that he intends to do certain illegal activity or any criminal offense after his intention then he acts upon that intention now there can be many factors which induces him to act in certain manner for example a may be jealous of b for example a wants to avenge the death of his son for example a wants to take revenge for the murder of his wife there can be many reasons but the crime starts in the head in the mind so the mental element and the act there must be a correlation or there must be 
a direct interconnection between the two and mere concurrence or mere happening of say mens rea here and actus reus here will not amount to crime so there is need to be congruency concurrency between the two to ensure that an offense has taken place now the term mens rea as i stated has not been defined so it can be deduced from as highlighted here from the intention of the person what that person intends to do whatever that person intends to do how he intends to ensure that whatever has he has designed in his brain in his head how he wants to implement that act which is punishable under law right so intention refers to a desire or the state of mind of that person or that accused and desire or state of mind can be deduced from certain circumstances so it says that mens rea refers to a guilty state of mind if accompanied by a particular conduct of the accused so guilty state of mind that guilty state of mind must accompany a certain conduct and here the state of mind can be referred or understood from his intention whether he intend to commit certain act which is punishable which he knows that or he has understanding or he has knowledge of the fact that whatever he intends to do will result in the achievement of his goal for in, for example if a intends to murder b so there are various ways in which a can murder b he can strike him with a iron pillar in his head he can shoot him he can stab him he can throw him from a balcony of say a 30 floor building so there are various ways this is the intention of a why he intends to murder b denotes motive he wants to take revenge of his wife death because a thinks it was because of b that is wife was murdered hence he wants to take revenge so that is the motive the second aspect is knowledge that he understands or has a knowledge that whatever act he intends to do will lead to a certain consequence as i said actus reus refers to consequence of the act consequences murder and another important term is reason to believe and all these three terms are found under section 39 of ipc where the term voluntarily has been defined so if you go through section 39 of ipc you'll find those three exact terms so the mental element has to be deduced from these terms like intention knowledge reason to believe fraudulently dishonestly right these highlights the element or active element of mind not in all cases so when we'll determine the in terms of degree of consequences adds to 
which part suppose if i have to ask you that which is more dangerous is intention more dangerous is knowledge more dangerous is reason to believe more dangerous in terms of achieving the consequence of that then in that sense in terms of degree of consequences it is the intention which is most or the highest amount of culpability lies there so state of mind can be understood from these three important terms which has been defined or provided for under section 39 of ipc namely the term voluntarily it means the person act voluntarily so these are some of the most important elements of mens rea or state of mind now having talked about mens rea it's important to also differentiate between offense and crime as i have stated that crime includes offense or those acts punishable under ipc plus other statutory offenses or those offenses provided under various legislations or various laws as you can say now the purpose of these legislations or statutory offenses is to ensure that state carries on with it with its welfare activities now as we all know that from world war 2 and hence moving forward the era of lpg came the industrialization liberalization and all those things and now we are so called in the technical age so it's possible that new ways of illegal act are being done which needs to be further defined or declared as an illegal activity or as an offense for example offenses done with the help of technology and for this purpose the information technology act was amended in order to incorporate those changing elements of the society under welfare activity includes the aspect of health sanitation even environment right to clean air clean water etc through the public trust doctrine so there are certain legislation which has been enacted to ensure the welfare aspect of state and for these certain elements including some examples even under the ipc some there are certain offenses where the element of mens rea is not needed or need not be proved now this situation is slightly different from that of england i'll give you an example suppose suppose if an owner of a flour mill is found guilty of selling adulterated food products the question is can he claim that he his in, his intention was not guilty or he did not had a criminal intent right it was only done mistakenly and he had no knowledge of that fact can he claim that defense answer is no because these are certain social welfare legislation which is intended for the overall benefits of the society right in such cases the element of mens rea can be dispensed with and these are examples of strict liability offenses or no fault liability offenses we'll look into it later so we need to understand with respect to crime first it's a wider umbrella second it is it can be defined as any illegal activity punishable under any law and since we are talking about any law we are also referring to the overall society at large because ultimately the goal of the state is also to ensure right right to life liberty and property of its citizens 
And thirdly, the criminal jurists have not been able to give a proper definition of the term crime. And yet it is understood from the context of the society at large. So just look at some of the definitions provided here. It says that Lord Atkin highlighted that domain of criminal jurisprudence can only be ascertained by examining what acts at any particular period are declared by the state to be crimes which are punished. Now there is a possibility that there are certain acts which was crime earlier but not now. For example, consensual sex between homosexual couples. Earlier it was a crime, but now after the Supreme Court judgment, it is not a crime. Right? So there can be such instances. So crime or any illegal activity has to be understood from the changing dynamics of the society. So it's possible that certain acts was declared as an illegal activity earlier, but it is not considered as an illegal activity now. Blackstone says that crime is an act committed or omitted in violation of a public law forbidding or commanding it. It is a violation of public rights and duties due to the whole community. So again, the element of society or the whole community comes here. So James Stephen says that crime is an act which is both forbidden by law and revolting to the moral sentiments of the society. So again, the elements of morality also comes into picture here. So there are certain aspects which can be declared as an offense or illegal and certain aspects which are immoral. But all immoral activities are not offense under any civilized society. Only certain immoral activities are declared as an offense. That depends on respective society. So, I am highlighting this because it will help you to further understand the concept of strict liability offense. Now, moving further, M. C. Sittalwad highlighted that what the Indian Penal Code seems to have done is to incorporate into the common law crimes the mens rea needed for that particular crime. So the element or the mental element has been incorporated within that particular crime itself or that particular offense itself, especially under the IPC. That's why the term mens rea has not been specifically defined. So that the guilty intention is generally to be gathered not from the common law but from the statute itself. So whatever the law says, if the law highlights that mens rea has to be incorporated, then yes, generally in most of the crimes, not in all crimes, in most of the crimes, mens rea is generally understood to be an important element or constituent element of crime. But there are certain exceptions as well, especially the strict fault liability crime or the strict liability crime. Now the position is now the position in England is slightly different. The position in England is that unless a particular law specifically exclude the element of mens rea, mens rea is supposed to be included. That is any crime has to be seen from the perspective of both mens rea plus actus reus. Now the so same cannot be stated in India for every instances of an offense. That will depend on what has been defined in a particular law. And it is here where certain exceptions do emerge with respect to the strict liability offense. So the position in England and India are slightly different. So, talking about the mental element or mens rea, how we can deduce it? So, we can deduce it from, as highlighted from the intention of the person, what he intends to do. So, intention refers to a very active state of mind. So, 
whether the act was done voluntarily whether the act was done willfully whether the accused has knowledge of the consequence of the act and whether the accused had reason to believe about the consequences so as already highlighted intention knowledge and reason to believe these are the three terms exactly used in the term voluntarily and degree of certainty can be deduced from top to bottom that is if we consider about intention then we can say that through intention one can determine the highest degree in terms of consequence of that then knowledge then right to believe so in terms of degree of certainty of the offense intention has the highest order followed by knowledge followed by reason to believe so if we distinguish between intention and knowledge intention refers to active or conscious state of mind it refers to consequence of the act is desired i intend to do something action is intended to achieve a purpose there is a purpose i intend to murder b that is the purpose the consequence of the act and it is highly desired actively desired because to achieve that particular goal i intend to murder b by pu pushing him through a 30 floor building from a 30 floor building whereas knowledge there is awareness or expectation of the consequences of that so the desire is not very active but certain or we can say it is in a passive state of mind subservient to an active state of mind however consequence is not desired actively refers to passive state of mind and desire of the consequence is missing there is no active desire when we talk about knowledge and in reason to believe that desire is even less so coming to the important terms because it is only through these terms we can deduce the meaning of the term mens rea or the constituents of mens rea so section 32 and 33 mentions about the term act which also includes omission and also includes series of commission and omission whereas section 44 defines injury so it says the word injury denotes any harm so whoever intends to harm any other person obviously the mental element or the guilty mind can be deduced from the term harm that a intends to harm b illegally caused to any person so that harm or injury harm is to be caused in body in mind in reputation or in property So these are the four ways in which harm can be caused illegally. Now this term comes here illegally. What is the meaning of this term illegally? Let's understand illegally first. Now to understand illegally, let's go through offense. the word offense denotes a thing made punishable by this code that is punishable under icc any activity which is punishable under the indian penal code is an offense and illegal also means legally bound to do the word illegal is applicable to everything which is an offense so the first element of being for an illegal act is that it is an offense second which is prohibited by law so the second term is prohibited by law and the third term is which furnishes ground for civil action which furnishes ground for civil action so as you can see the term illegal has a wider umbrella as compared to term offense because it also includes offense it also includes anything prohibited by any law can be any statutory law can be any other law and which furnishes ground for civil action so these can be said to be an illegal act on the other hand the term good faith means 
an act which is carried on with due care and attention so two terms comes into picture here so if someone does any act with due care and attention then we can definitely say the element of mens rea is missing but if someone carries an offense if someone does any act which is prohibited by law or any activity for which or which furnishes ground for civil action then we can say that the element of mens rea is present that's how we can deduce the presence or absence of the element of mens rea now another very important term accident this also highlights the absence of mens rea how just look into the definition nothing is an offense if which is done by an by accident or misfortune so the first term here used is nothing is an accident which is done by accident or misfortune second without any criminal intention without any criminal intention or knowledge in doing of a lawful act in a lawful manner by lawful means with proper care and caution so clearly in an accident the element of mens rea is not there because it is done without any <coughs> malicious intent and without any criminal intent or knowledge while doing a lawful act so all these terms denotes the state of mind and that's how we understand that mens rea can be understood by going through these different terms highlighted in the indian penal code now coming to the exceptions of mens rea and it starts with this very famous maxim ignorantia facti exequit ignorantia facti non exequit which simply means that ignorance of fact is an excuse but ignorance of law is no excuse suppose on a road or on a highway i am driving at a speed of 130 km per hour and the very next day i receive a chalan from the police department i cannot plead that i did not know that driving fast is a criminal offense or i cannot plead that i had any criminal intent i had a guilty mind there was mens rea because the motor vehicles act in india is a social welfare legislation enacted to ensure safety of people who are flying on the road and because of that there are specific speed limits either on national highways or within the city similarly there are various legislation food alteration act arms act you cannot carry arms and when uh, you know you are detained then you say that i didn't know that carrying arms is illegal you cannot have this defense that ignorance of law or for that matter the flour mill owner cannot plead the defense that he was not aware about the adulterated food being sold from his premises or supplied from his premises there are two very famous case here in this aspect one is lady La lady chatterley's lovers case and the second is state of maharashtra versus m h george in lady chatterley's lover case there was a book being sold and that book contained obscene material now the seller of that book was detained under section 292 ipc for ops carrying on or publishing or selling obscene things he pleaded the defense that first he did not had a guilty mind and second he was not aware about the law the court said that it does not matter so under section 292 the element of mens rea is not relevant so even if the element of mens rea is not there the act or the consequence of the act is a crime 
or the consequence of the act is an offence under IPC. Similarly, under M. H. George, State of Maharashtra versus M. H. George. Now, this gentleman was travelling from Zurich to Manila, and in between, in India, <clears throat> he was transiting. He was transiting through India. And he was carrying certain amount of gold which was beyond the restriction imposed by RBI. He was caught by the custom officers in the interim. So he pleaded that first of all he was travelling from Zurich to Manila and second he did not know about the law. The court held that this person was held under the FERA laws. The court held that the purpose of FERA laws then was to ensure that smuggling activities did not take place. Right, and also the fact that he cannot plead ignorance of the law. So these social welfare legislations, in that sense, then becomes important and acts as an exception to mens rea. So such offences are also termed as no fault liability offences or strict liability offences. So if you look at this table. Then it highlights about certain offences under IPC for which mens rea is not a necessity, including waging war against government of India under section 121, sedition, creating public nuisance under section 268, kidnapping and abduction, counterfeiting coins, and sale of obscene books or pamphlets under section 292. Social welfare legislation for which the element of mens rea is not necessary includes Motor Vehicles Act, Arms Act, NDPS Act, the Public Liability Insurance Act, Essential Commodities Act, the Prevention of Food Alteration Act, among other legislation. Economic offences also include such as Income Tax Act or FEMA or SEBI Act. Like you cannot say if an income tax notice, if you receive an income tax notice, one cannot say that I did not know that I have to pay income tax. Although it's a civil wrong, yet you have to pay penalty for that. So these are some of the cases with respect to the exceptions to mens rea, Lady Chatterley's lover case, Ranjit Udeshi versus State of Maharashtra. You cannot plead the defense that you were ignorant of the fact that selling of obscene books are punishable or is punishable. State of Maharashtra versus M. H. George, State of Madhya Pradesh versus Narayan Singh, exporting fertilizers without permit under Essential Commodities Act. So the defence of ignorance of law cannot be pleaded. Similarly, State of Orissa versus K. Rajeshwar Rao, selling adulterated food under Prevention of Food Alteration Act, because these are social welfare legislations enacted for the betterment of the society. However, there are certain benefits and certain criticisms also for these social welfare legislations. The benefits include or the justification includes transformation from police state to welfare state. Earlier, the state was a police state in terms of protection of right to life, liberty and property. But now, there are multifaceted activities performed by state including the welfare activities and because of that in order to ensure the social welfare or the, so <coughs> the social the society the element of mens rea at times is taken away for two purposes first there is an element of utilitarian principle of bentham that is highest greatest greatest happiness of the greatest number and secondly to set a higher standards of proof in such crime to ensure that social to ensure that social welfare activities are being carried out and also for the overall welfare of the society but it also you know constrains the other person because as we have highlighted that crime includes both mental aspect and the consequential aspect or the physical aspect so when the mental aspect is not there it becomes easier for the state to prosecute the other person so there is a kind of asymmetry between the state on one hand and the other person or so called guilty or accused. 
so the criticism we can say that it is against the principle of criminal law to punish without criminal intent of course it acts as a shortcut for states to prove guilt as mens rea need not be proved in court of law so it becomes very difficult for the accused also to ensure that they are not guilty and hence this asymmetry creates asymmetry or disparity between accused and the prosecutor due to absence of mens rea the deterrence impact of strict liability principle is questionable to increasing instances of such cases so the idea was also to create a deterrent effect in the society but as such it's not helping in a great manner or in a ma manner desired by the state authority and it has also been highlighted by the 29th law commission that ipc indian penal code does not cover all situations of social offenses and proposed special provisions for dealing with such cases so when the law commission had highlighted certain constraints of the strict liability offense so in case a question is asked regarding you know critical examine this as uh, this concept of strict liability offenses and i'm sure you can come up with these positives and also some of the concerns so as you can see that in this discussion we understood the constituent elements of crime and this is exactly what was asked by upsc if you look at this question mere proof of presence of both actus reus and mens rea is not sufficient the concurrence between the two also needs to be established to impose criminal liability elucidate in the light of case law now here we also saw that mere actus reus and mens rea will not constitute crime unless there is a connection between these two so there has to be a concurrence there they cannot be two disjoint events this is what was being asked even without mens rea there are certain acts which are offenses under the indian penal code 1860 enumerate such offenses i am sure you can answer this particular question now whether the maxim actus facet reum nisi mens rea in general and the common law doctrine of mens rea as an independent doctrine in particular are relevant in the interpretation of provisions of the indian penal code just look at this question trying to ask the very basics of mens rea explain the above in light of juristic opinions and judicial pronouncement so here all those juristic opinions which we discussed can act handy while writing this particular answer if you look into this question in determining the quantum of criminal liability the law takes into account the motive magnitude and character of the offender examine the statement in light of absence of mens rea in statutory offenses questions were asked in 2016 18 19 20 22 so questions are regularly asked on this very important principle of mens rea and actus reus and also mens rea and statutory offenses so i hope this discussion gives you a clarity on this very important concept of mens rea and actus reus to determine criminal liability thank you so